Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am Game Master Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, today's video I am doing the next episode of my Shadow Dark RPG Core Rule Book Breakdown. So uh, today I'm going to take a look at uh, downtime and carousing in Shadow Dark RPG. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So here we have uh, downtime. So between adventures, you choose to undertake one downtime activity. Carousing. Carousing is a way for you to convert the coin you've earned into XP and other benefits. You'll likely come out of a carousing event with a new NPC contact, whether friend or foe. You might even acquire a new magic item if you're bold and lucky enough. Carousing can last for several days of in-game time, so the GM will use the time passes rule found on page 82 as needed. If you want to play out a gambling scene in detail, you can use the Wizards and Thieves game on page 94 to determine who wins a bet and how many valuables change hands. See page 92 for more details of carousing. You can also, during, uh, during downtime, learning. Your character may wish to learn a new skill during downtime. In order to learn a new skill, you must find a ca capable instructor who is willing to teach you. You can't typically learn another class's or ancestry's unique talents, but you can learn auxiliary skills. Examples include a new language or how to ride a sandworm using a harness. Learning enables you to do new actions or gives you advantage on certain checks. Work with the GM to determine what you can try to learn, then make an extreme DC 18 intelligence check. If you succeed, you learn the new skill. If you fail, you can try again as your next downtime activity, this time lowering the difficulty of the intelligence check by one step. All right, so that's that's pretty cool. I mean, you can get really lucky and roll a uh, you know roll an eighteen or above on a d twenty, you know, including your modifiers. Uh, and if you don't pass at that time, the next time that you have the potential downtime, uh, you can try that same skill. Try to learn that new same skill. But now it won't be a DC uh, 18, it will come down to a DC 15 uh, and so on. 15, then 12, and then becomes much easier beyond that. Let's take a look at carousing. So carousing, when you return from Shadow Dark, you can carouse to celebrate your heroic exploits. To carouse... Each participant pitches in for the cost of the event. Then each participant rolls a D8 plus the event's bonus to determine their own outcome. Outcomes. Each outcome gains XP noted for their result along with another ill or positive effects. If the group decides to play out the results of an individual roll, the entire carousing group is usually present for the events. So uh, let's see. So let's say I'm going to roll a D8. Um, let me grab one just to see how this will work. So I rolled a three. So plus the events bonus. So if I am doing the first, I, a worthy night of drinking and festivities, I'm going to pay three gold pieces I have no bonus to my roll of a three. So let's see what the outcome was. You wake up in the gutter with 15% of your total wealth spent, but I gain three XP as a result. Let's try another one just to see how this works out. So I am going to 
let's say I'm going to attempt a hazy week-long bender that runs multiple well-known taverns dry. So I'm going to go with a plus four on this roll. It's going to cost me 900 gold pieces now. All of us can chip in for that cost. And I rolled a seven. So that is going to become an 11. Let's see what an 11 is. You performed a humiliating prank on a despised and corrupt merchant. You gain five XP and an ally in the city watch. All right, so you can see how this really works out. I mean, these are pretty cool. Um, these are pretty cool things. So it's, it's an event that you choose, the buy-in cost, and then the bonus that applies to it and the best possible thing that you can end up with is a 14 plus you wake up deep inside a local ruler stronghold holding one of their priceless family heirlooms footsteps approach you gain six xp and a 90 to 100 item from your treasure table if you escape all right, so you can escape with a um, pretty hard, uh, pretty high number item. Uh, I'll have to take a look at those and see that later, but pretty cool stuff. Um, you wake up literally and your bed does, so this is a one. You gain just two XP. You're locked in the stocks for 1d4 days and find 20% of your total wealth of setting a building on fire you gain two xp so no matter what you're going to gain xp but it's these middle outcomes that are uh the potential either positives or negatives let's take a look at wizards and thieves so in the smoky gambling dens raucous taverns and dim back alleys the clatter of dice signals the game of wizards and thieves wizards and thieves is a fast-paced betting game Beloved by gamblers of all stripes, use it when you want to play uh, pay, play out a wager with more complex systems than stat checks allow. So to start, you begin the players agree to a number of coins each will bring to the game, typically 20. Each play player adds six coins to the pot. All players roll 3d6. The player with the highest result becomes the active player. Gameplay moves clockwise from that person as the active player changes. The role of wizards, sixes, and thieves, ones, cancel each other out on a one-to-one -one basis when determining majorities. See gameplay. So gameplay. The active player declares wizard or thief before rolling 3d6. Declaring thief rolled majority thieves. The active player takes coins from the pot equal to the lowest remaining die after cancellations. The active, the active player goes again. Declared thief, roll majority wizards. The active player adds coins to the pot equal to the lowest remaining die after cancellations. Play passes to the next player. Declared wizard, rolled majority wizards. Everyone but the active player adds coins to the pot equal to the lowest remaining die after cancellations. Then the active player goes again. Declared wizard rolled majority of thieves. The active player adds coins to the pot equal to the lowest remaining die after cancellation. Play passes to the next player. No wizard or thief majority. Play passes to the next player. Rolled three wizards. The active player takes the whole pot. The game ends. Rolled three thieves. The pot is split evenly among all remaining players except the active player. The active player gets any remainder that does not divide evenly. A result called honor among thieves. The game ends. The game ends. The game ends when the pot reaches zero. If a player runs out of coins, that player is out of the game. If all but one player loses their last coin, the pot goes to the player whose turn 
it would have been after the last roll. The game's winner is the person who ends up with the most coins. Uh, low stakes, so you can play low stake games, which are a D4 played for either copper, a single drink, bragging rights, or minor baubles. Mid stakes, gold, drink, uh, drink rounds. Sworn favor owed, a personal trophy, high stakes jewelry, fine drink in the city, a finger off your hand, an irreplaceable item, an epic diamond, rarest drink in the world, your life, and magic items. And so there we have, uh, let's see if we have anything right after this example of play. Uh, so the next time we're going to get into the section on the Game Master, I will switch here and come back over to here. So uh, you can see now, I was watching a live stream with uh, with Kelsey Dion um, yesterday, I believe it was, where she was uh, she was in real time creating the Bard. And the Bard is going to have, at least where I left off because I had to leave, uh, the Bard is going to have some abilities to increase your um, your activities during downtime. So uh, give you either benefits or you know or or whatnot uh, to your roles, perhaps, or you know certainly enhance various uh, various aspects of uh, the group dynamic, uh, whether it be in downtime or in, in during adventuring as well. So. Um, so it was really cool to see that she's, uh, you know, this wasn't a create it and forget it kind of little, you know, um, uh, gimmick that was thrown into the uh, into the game system. Uh, it's really meant, including the little gambling game there, uh, Wizards and Thieves, it's really meant to keep on, you know, revisiting and keep on utilizing it, I'm sure that there'll be expansions to, uh, you know, to providing additional games or um, expansion to that list of the carousing, you know, events and, and possible outcomes and such. So really, really cool to see how Shadow Dark has, uh, has shaped up uh, to being something that, that really does, um, really does focus on all aspects of the gaming experience so it's not just what's happening during the adventure but it's uh what's happening in between adventures and i think that's a that's something that's that's you know often probably overlooked and uh you know not enough not enough i think uh importance is placed on what's going on during the downtime so it's really good to see that here with shadow dark and uh you know, it, it's one of those things that, you know, no, it is not unique to Shadow Dark. Shadow Dark did not introduce the idea of carousing or, or anything along those lines. Um, you know, I, I personally, I used it with uh, Conan uh, 2D20 system as well. Uh, so it, it's not that it's new. It's just that it's it's being focused on. It's being looked at. It's being brought up again. And so that's what I think is important here is that, uh, you know, Shadow Dark is really shaping up to be that, um, you know, that type of an RPG that, that kind of incorporates all of these different good ideas and puts them into one place. And so that's what I'm really looking forward, you know, to actually getting the physical copies in my hand so that I can really truly experience it and, and even start running it as well. I, I don't like running games straight off PDFs. So, uh, you know, really excited and stoked for this thing to actually come out. So the next time I re revisit uh, Shadow Dark, I will be going over the Game Masters section of the, um, you know, of the book as well. And uh, I will continue to make these videos until you know you grow so tired of it that you'll stop watching them but right now they're doing pretty good so i uh encourage you to uh to like and subscribe and to share these videos out there please leave your comments in there if you're you know if you already have uh shadow dark as far as the you know the 
the PDF and everything, and you want to have a discussion about the game system, please feel free to jump in there on the uh, comments section. And uh, I, I'd love to talk to others that are, you know, probably equally as excited about this game as I am. And, um, you know, just looking forward to actually playing it. So thanks for joining. Have a great rest of your weekend. And as always, I look forward to seeing you on the gaming screen sometime soon. Have a great day.